Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at the new Wolverine Deep Cut mini series from Marvel Comics by Chris Claremont and Edgar Salazar. So that is what we're looking at today, guys. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Okay, so I am a big Chris Claremont um, uh, fan when it comes to the X-Men. Like, Claremont is my jam. That is my X-Men. Um... I have sporadically read the X-Men since his departure, and so I'm always going to pick up, like, anything written by Claremont that is, is specifically X-related. Although I think he's Marvel exclusive. I mean, it would be really nice to see him, like, do stuff for other companies and branch out a little bit, but I'll take Claremont any way I can get him. Um, so the basic premise of this story is, um, like, Wolverine fights Sabretooth to a death match every year on his birthday to celebrate. Um, hey, we all have our rituals, right? Um, so this is kind of that. This takes place when the X-Men are presumed dead in the Australian outback, um, when they fake their deaths um, so that they could, um, you know, confront their foes or fight crime easier without notice of the world. Good luck with that in the day of the internet and um, social media, right? So I have to say, Philip Tan did this cover. Um, I'm hit or miss with Philip Tan. Philip Tan was introduced to me, like, when he was doing the X-Men years ago. And he was kind of hit or miss for me then. Um, he recently finished Frank Miller's Ronin miniseries. And um, I don't know. He's super talented, super detailed. But this cover is doing nothing for me whatsoever. And I can't help but feel it might be because of the coloring. I'm not so sure. We're going to talk a little bit about the art, by the way. All right, so here we have Wolverine. Chris Claremont, writer. Edgar Salazar, artist. Carlos Lopez, color artist. Um, Travis Lanham, letterer. And let's see. C.B. Sabolsky, editor-in-chief. Mark Basso, editor. All kinds of assistant editors, executive editors. There are a lot of editors going on here. Oh my gosh. Like, have like one editor and an assistant editor, and then you can spend more money on paying talent to do the book. You have a Chris Claremont book. This is a special event. Um, a Chris Claremont uh, limited series featuring Wolverine that comes to mind was drawn by Frank Miller. So can we please get some better artists for Chris Claremont? Um... I mean, this art is okay, but I don't know. It's just like, it re It looks like every other Marvel book that has come out in the past 10 years, specifically from the X office. Like, I cannot think of one real X artist that excites me that much. Even with like the new X launch that is coming like next week, um, Ryan Stegman, I think is the most exciting artist of that bunch. I just feel like it's mediocre. It's almost like this new Marvel, ho you know how Marvel used to have like a house style that was built around Jack Kirby. Now it feels like Marvel has this house style that's built around, um, mediocre Instagram artists who use procreate and it's obvious i don't know i'm sorry that's terrible to say but i mean there it's not all bad it's not all bad i am totally into the story um i always think of storm and kitty when i think of claremont characters like the ones that he wrote the best or the ones that seem to be the most important to him but they're all his children and let's face it nobody writes wolverine better than claremont in my opinion it is so good i love his wolverine um i love him fighting um Sabretooth. I mean, who doesn't like a fight between him and Sabretooth? It's kind of funny, too. It's like with this weird modern kind of art, like the old school, like uniforms don't look as good as they would. If you're having like somebody like, I don't know, Alan Davis or like, um, you know, Mark Silvestri or Art Adams or anybody, anybody drawing it. Um, it's so funny because um, I love, you know, it's like anyone who has read like pretty much the entire Claremont run of the X-Men is like quite familiar with his writing style and his tropes. And I love it. And he pulled a fast one on us because in the opening page, he says, call me Wolverine. They say I'm the best there is at what I do. Since when? He's been spouting that he's the best at what he does forever. And I just kind of like that twist on that. I mean, Claremont has to be aware of, you know, uh, the little um, loving jokes that we make about his writing, you know, like the 
the classic, I'm the best as of what I do. I can't think of another Claremont trope off the top of my head, but they exist. Oh, I think there's another one in the back, so don't worry about it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you have this awesome version of Storm from the Australian Outback. And I don't know, she should just look completely gorgeous and beautiful in every single panel. And she really doesn't here, I'm sorry to say. And this, the choreography of this fight scene just is not working for me. There's no way she's going from this position, position to this position. And I don't even know what that position is. It's almost like the artist took like random like poses and just sort of like moved them around on the page until they looked like they were fighting each other. I don't know. What can I say? I'm, I don't mean to rip on the art so bad. Like this is just ugly and awful. Like in lieu of a background, I'm going to do some like shitty, like really gross hatching that looks like a murder scene on the wall. I don't know. Like I can't, I, this is the direction. I did not see this, uh, uh, review going, I have to say. Um, but like this, like all the speed lines and stuff, I'm just like not into it. I just feel like, you know, Claremont is like a treasure. You know, he's like, uh, should be revered and respected. And I think that Marvel in a lot of ways sometimes is like, we don't know what to do with them. So we'll throw him a bone, give him a few mini series. Like Tom Brevrood, um, the new ex editor, has even publicly said recently that, um, Claremont would probably never write any, like, current new continuity, like, X-Book because he wrote the X-Men 30 years ago and his X-Men doesn't really jive with the X-Men of today, which kind of makes sense. But if that's the case, then give me, like, five monthly Claremont miniseries and I'll read them. I'd be happy with that. I know. I'm too old. I'm outdated. I need to step up with the program. I need to get with the new kids, but I just can't do it. And then I turn the page and I see this storm, like, in the Avengers. Like, she doesn't belong in the Avengers. And I don't know. This is just weird art to me. I'm not loving it. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's like, yes, queen, drag queen art or something like that. I don't know. It just, it's weird to me. Maybe it's good, but somehow I doubt it. Um, but this is good. I'm really loving this, uh, first issue, like, story-wise. And then at the end, we see that Kitty and Yukio are here. So Kitty, Yukio, everyone else thinks the X-Men are dead. But, um, Kitty has decided that on Wolverine's birthday, as a present to him, she's gonna go guard, um, uh, Mariko and make sure that Sabretooth doesn't kill her. Because, uh, even though he believes Wolverine is dead... Um, he's going to carry this vendetta out forever and, you know, on his birthday and then just go kill people that are important to Wolverine. I mean, that is some hate. You know, he needs some real, um, I don't know, some therapy or something for sure. This is a pet peeve of mine, too, that I've noticed in recent, like, other X-Men series. Doing a flashback, flashbacks to the Kitty Pride and Wolverine miniseries would it kill you to use reference from the actual series? None of these outfits, none of these scenes are actual. It's like, it's almost like you didn't even read it. As the artist, I think that's hugely irresponsible. Um, I don't know, as a reader, someone who read the actual series when it came out, it just seems like a disservice to us to not just even have the decency to put her in the same damn outfit or have the same hair, for the love of God. This, I feel like, I don't know if we've seen this before, and maybe we have, but it's kind of new to me, and I kind of loved it, is the casual way that Sabretooth just claws out Wolverine's eyes, and he's like, oh damn, he tore out my eyes. Well, I fought blind before, and that is Wolverine, right? Tenacious, the best there is at what he does, a small but mighty, uh, violent, just mongrel, you know? And they are going at it. Um, fight to the finish. And he does finish. Spoilers. <laughs> but, and he just now notices after fighting him to the death. Wait a second. The blood smells different. Gotta be a clone. And we all know who makes clones, right? Well, of course we do. We've all been watching X-Men 97. And um, the clone master himself. Dun, dun, dun. Mr. Sinister. So you got me. I'm here. Maybe the art will grow on me. I don't know. I was probably too harsh on it. It's just not my taste, but it feels like the taste of the X art forever, and I'm not living for it, and I will tell you that. But I am living for next issue. 
the Marauders. Yes, tease me with that. I'm totally there. Mr. Sinister, Wolverine. I am very excited to see how this comes together. And I hope Storm comes back because I do love Storm by Claremont, of course. So I'm glad that we had that in there. So I do recommend this. That said, even though I trashed the art for half the video, I apologize for that. The Claremont writing is totally worth it. And the art isn't half bad, but I don't know. It just could be better. Anyway, best there is at what he does. You betch. You betcha. Anyway, oh, that was the other Claremont trope that I found interesting. Um... Somehow Kitty just became Wolverine after he trained her into becoming a ninja. And Yukio asked her something. And she's like, oh, okay. Can you hear that noise in the woods? Yup. Shouldn't we check it out? Nope. Total Claremont trope. Just like that. Okay, so we're going to end up in it. Anyway, fun issue. Wolverine deep cut. New miniseries from Claremont. I think it's five issues. They never say, but these things always are these days. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button, and I'll bring you more soon.